everyone we will discuss the topic of gas chromatography today gas chromatography is a technique used for separation of volatile compounds used for separation of volatile compounds in this technique the volatile compound can be a organic compound or a inorganic compound but the main property required for gas chromatography is volatility if a compound is not volatile it will not be separated like all chromatography it has a stationary phase and a mobile phase uh, uh, i have already drawn the overall circuit diagram of gas chromatography so that we can understand it see a very small amount of sample is injected from a port like this this is the sample injection port by injection word we can sample injection port by the injection word we can itself understand that this sample the amount of sample which is fed to gas chromatography is very small the amount of sample is 1 microliter as small as it means even if you have 1 microliter of sample available then also detection of sample components can be done with the help of gas chromatography now this part this part of the chromatography this is the column actually now this spiral thing shows that the length of the column is large large column is there large column is there this length is itself shown greater the length of the column greater is the resolution and better is the gas chromatography technique and this part this arrow part from here the mobile phase is applied like all chromatography even gas chromatography has two things one is the stationary phase first thing is the stationary phase and second is the this one is the mobile phase now what is there in the stationary phase and what is there in the mobile phase in the stationary phase this this column is going to make up the stationary phase if we take a small section of this column and draw it over here so this is the stationary phase stationary phase is generally a liquid it is a liquid which is coated on the surface of on the surface of silica this is silica right and this one is the stationary phase which is actually a liquid which is coated on the silica phase and upon it there is again another support is there on which this silica is held there is a support there is a poly made up of polyimide support is there on the support silica is there and on overall this silica support liquid is poured on the surface so since liquid is a bit viscous so it will stick to the surface of the silica gel or you can use the word it will adsorb itself on the silica gel so this is about the stationary phase coming to mobile phase this was the column and inside the column the stationary phase is present now coming to this uh, mobile phase how does it look like the mobile phase can either be first thing it can be a inert gas like helium or argon or uh, secondly it can be a non reactive gas the gas should be non reactive non reactive gas like hydrogen like nitrogen now this type uh, the purpose of mobile phase is just to push the sample is being injected over here and this is the column the so sample will move through the column like this the purpose of mobile phase is not to react with the sample components or to the column components its function is just to uh, move through it's just to push the sample components further through the column and the component sample component which is pushed first of all will move the farthest and reach the detector and which is pushed the least will reach at the end and reach the detector now first part was your column second your sample 
third part for mobile base fourth part is detector and fifth part is computer we will discuss about detector and computer later first come to this special part of gas chromatography is this column this column is kept inside inside the oven you can see this black that i have marked over all this is a oven now what the oven will do oven will oven can change the temperature of the column again and again so if you started may if you started chromatography suppose at 25 degrees celsius you can end at 25 degrees celsius you can increase and decrease the chromatographic separation accordingly right now uh, we will take an example and understand the technique of gas chromatography further Suppose we have a mixture containing four components. This was your mobile phone. So Suppose you have a mixture. It has four components: A, B, C, and D. And all these components have different degrees. Suppose this has a boiling point of 50 degrees Celsius. No, let's suppose it has a boiling point of 25 degrees Celsius. This has a boiling point of 50 degrees Celsius. I'm writing boiling point B. And suppose this has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. This is water, suppose. And D, suppose it has a boiling point of 200 degrees Celsius. One important point to note that gas chromatography can separate components which have boiling point up to 300 degrees Celsius. So all these four components are falling in the range of gas chromatography. Right? Suppose you have four components and you have to separate them. You start with a column. You take the sample, small amount of this sample A B C D, and you inject it over here. You inject one microliter of the sample over here, and sample will come out over here. It will heat up, and you start suppose at 25 degrees Celsius. It will heat up and come at 25 degrees Celsius, right? And at this temperature, um, slowly, gradually, you start increasing the temperature and take it to 100 degrees Celsius. So at 100 degrees Celsius, what will happen? C will become volatile. B will become volatile. A will become volatile and D it will still remain attached to the stationary phase. Now I'll draw the stationary phase over here. See the maximum number of components. The maximum number of A. There is no chance of A. Suppose this is A black color. So there is no chance of A binding to the column. This is the stationary phase. So there is no chance of A binding to the stationary phase. Similarly, B it will also not suppose this red colored is B. So B will also not bind. Right. Coming to C, which is at 100 degrees Celsius. So C. Suppose this is C. So C will also not bind. And D. The last one is bounded. Is completely bounded. These red dots we can take as D. This is completely bounded to the stationary phase. Now the mobile phase comes from, which is an inert gas. Right. So the sample component, which has the lowest boiling point, will have highest vapor pressure. This will have highest vapor pressure because its vapors will be maximum, right? So when mobile phase passes through column, it will push these black dots outside. So first of all, these black, the A component, the A component will come out of the stationary phase first of all, right? After this, the B, B component will. Come out. Right. So suppose if I say if then B will come out. Suppose A came out first, then C will come out, then C will come out, and in the end B component will come out. Right. One by one. So the sample component having 
highest vapor pressure will come out first having the least boiling point and the sample component having least vapor pressure will come in the last right come to this detector part all these four components a b c d will come across this detector many types of detectors are used in ih a in this uh, gas chromatography in this gas liquid chromatography but the most common detector used is fid that is flame ionization detector this detector uses suppose i draw it over here uses a flame of hydrogen this detector uses a flame of hydrogen suppose a the component came in first of all it uses the flame of hydrogen to heat this a component right and uh, after heating this component it will convert the components into uh, ions the ions can be cations or anions now uh, flame ionization detector is used for separation of organic compounds if the sample suppose this abcd sample that we had used over here was a organic compound so we know that all the organic compounds are made up of carbon hydrogen and oxygen we all know this all hydrocarbons are made up of this now if a comes over here so this a may be made up of carbon hydrogen and oxygen upon heating up it is ionizing itself so carbon and hydrogen will convert into cations and this oxygen will convert into anions depending upon the amount of ionic species the amount of charged species you can easily find out what this compound is sometimes these detectors are connected to mass spectro photometer and the technique is known as gas chromatography ms gcms gas chromatography with mass spectro photometer this mass spectro photometer further detects exactly what the sample component was now after a b will come it will detect what b is then c will come it will detect c and finally it will detect d coming to the computer part when all these sample components have been detected they are connected to a computer see actually in gas chromatography what is done the time period the for the time uh, it remain uh, the sample component remains in this column that is noted down i again see the time we are on this part the computer part the time or you can say the retention time is taken on the x axis and on the y axis the sample component is taken sample component is taken now suppose suppose this was 5 seconds it is in seconds 10 seconds 15 seconds 20 suppose after 5 seconds you get a peak of a after 10 seconds you get a peak of b 15 seconds you get a peak then 20 you get a peak of a b c and d you get a peak of a b c and d and these peaks are all equal suppose that means a is having the uh, lowest boiling point highest vapor pressure and it comes out first so computer will give you this kind of graph this is your qualitative assessment that a from a standard graph on the internet also they are available and uh, that a what is the component which comes out through this column in 5 seconds what component comes in with 10 seconds and so like right? this is your qualitative assessment if you have to find out the quantitative assessment that how much quantitative assessment has to be done that how much a suppose you have to find out how much a is there to find the surface area present inside the a. this is the 
the surface area present inside the peak present inside the peak this is the quantity of a present similarly you can calculate the quantity of b c and d right now what is the purpose of this equal peaks this equal peaks means that all the four analytes a b c d had been isolated at same temperature under the same conditions say we started the experiment at 50 degree celsius and we ended also at 50 degree celsius then separation will be like this then this type of peaks will be obtained now if you get some small or long peaks suppose you say suppose the b peak was longer than the a peak and then c peak and this type of peaks if they are noted if this type of peaks are noted what does this mean it means that we are changing the reaction conditions for a the conditions were something else suppose we prefer, we separated a at suppose say 25 degrees celsius we separated a at 50 degrees celsius we separated b this was b at 100 degrees celsius c at 150 and d at 200 degrees celsius so in all the four cases the conditions are different then uh, this type of graph will be obtained right sometimes in this graph tailing is observed what does what is the meaning of tailing tailing means you uh, hmm. if this is tailing exactly you cannot find where the sample adenine actually started from tailing means tailing indicates that the sample injected in the starting is more than normal means if the normal range was 1 microliter you have to inject 1 microliter if you inject more than this so you will get the tailing of peaks in a way you are getting wastage of the sample right so this is overall gas chromatography in other video we will discuss about the advantages of this technique.